possibly think so from how things were presented. Rather, they were striving to turn the lead of an ordinary and undeveloped consciousness into the gold of a fully realized and enlightened soul. The successful result of the alchemical process was the creation of the Philosopher's Stone. Like a true symbol, the steps can be applied to many things. It is the process, the machine. What you put into it metaphorically will undergo the archetypal steps if carefully attended by the alchemist and culminate in a higher state, the alchemical gold, charcoal into diamond. When we use charcoal as the focus of an alchemical operation, we begin by recognizing that its essential ingredient, carbon, is the materia prima that will emerge perfected as the diamond. When the charcoal undergoes the cleansing fire and a stress of geological proportions, it is hardened into a perfect, impenetrable diamond. It becomes itself the geometric map perfect universal order, from the highest spiritual registers to the lowest physical realms, the universal order can be seen as the lattice which guides the growth of the vine, as an archetype that guides and supports life on the material plane. While many agents can be introduced into this machine and undergo the archetypal steps to its perfection, the one to which the most closely guarded alchemical allegory and occult law is addressed is consciousness itself. This is the essence of the great work, the application of this special key to this mysterious universal formula. The key directs the alchemical process to the materia prima of our very consciousness, our awareness, ourselves, our mental selves, our spiritual selves. Consciousness is a material prima. While the value of creating alchemical glass or alchemical gold may seem more obvious, one might ask, what is the benefit of applying the alchemical steps to consciousness? Like modern Wicca, alchemy saw the world as a male-female duality. Alchemical ideas about this duality are strikingly similar to Wiccan ideas about goddess and god. The masculine polarity was thought of as red and fixed. The feminine polarity as white and volatile. The union of these two produced the physical world. The great work, or alchemical marriage, was the quest to unite and transcend this duality. It is the great work which is often mistakenly described as the quest to transmute base metals. The great work began with what is termed materia prima. This is the ordinary state of being, the lead in the analogy. The great work ended in the creation of the philosopher's stone. This is enlightenment, or the gold of the analogy. The materia prima was considered to have both a masculine and a feminine aspect which were in opposition within it, until brought into alignment through the great work, hence the term alchemical marriage. The great work has three main parts, the nigredo, the albedo, and finally the rubedo. These correspond to the sacred colors of the Wiccan goddess, black, white, and red. In addition, a fourth stage, called the caudapavonis, marked the transition between nigredo and albedo. Symbolically, the materia prima was placed into an athenor, or alchemical furnace, which subjected it to steady pressure and reduced it to its constituent parts. This residue was the nigredo, the destruction of preconceived forms considered necessary for new growth to occur. What this really means is that before one can grow spiritually, one must first eliminate old ideas and limitations. As the Zen Buddhists say, 
only an empty bowl can be filled. Alchemists described this principle through the maxim, no generation without corruption, an idea similar to the Wiccan to rise you must fall. New growth cannot take place until the old is cleared away. The Negredo then fermented until at length the Cauda Pavonis occurred. This was portrayed as a light show of many colors. This means that when we have purified ourselves of old ideas, we may then experience many new ideas, and indeed will at first run riot with them, learning all we can from all sources. During this period we may in fact be bedazzled or blinded by the newfound light, but through the application of self-control, we can learn to discern what is helpful to our growth and what is merely entertaining. After the Cauda Pavonis, the subject must be purified, resulting in the albedo. The albedo is a pure and receptive spiritual state. This means that after initial euphoria, a more controlled spiritual growth may unfold, elevating and expanding the consciousness. Finally, after being subjected to pressure again, the albedo becomes activated as the rubedo. What this means is that spiritual knowledge, to be valuable, must be put into practice. No matter how deep the ideas, or how great the abilities, they mean nothing if they are, as Mabel Hykerel once put it, left on a shelf to gather dust. Thus old ideas must first be transcended, then controlled spiritual